Hey hey and welcome to map 29 of Doom 2, the living end, or at least the beta version of it. So there's nothing really interesting to talk about with the beta version of this level because it's effectively a half finished version of the final level. Romero clearly hadn't finalised the design yet but the, the overall layout here of the level, so like the frame of the level is here including the starting part here. So it's clear that he worked on this late into development and what you're seeing here is pretty much the template for what he would fill in later on. You can see in the middle the, there's the platform where the stairs are that lead up to the cyber demon and the exit. I mean it's a lot closer here so obviously like he puts that a bit further back I think in the final version. I mean we can jump over here, can't we? Yes. So, it's interesting to see that this level was kind of left towards the last few months of development. It kind of makes sense as well, because if this became the penultimate level, they probably decided to see if they could make it grander and bigger. And you can see that this was always intended to be a big level. The pain floors aren't activated yet either. But yeah, there's not much to see here, so let's dive into the retail version of this level. And as you can see, it's a bit more fleshed out. We get a chain gun at the start here. The chain guns are very essential. One of the big things about this level, in my opinion, is the fact that you can be shot at from way across the level and you don't really get recourse on that. And it provides both a challenge and an ever-present threat over the player because you can see up top there there's a mancubus trying to shoot down on us there's also chain gunners over there there's these imps that are coming round towards us it's a very dangerous level this one and it kind of puts all the skills that you've been learning throughout the game to the test it's a true elevation of skill in my opinion and I think that that's what this level really should be doing so we'll take out these chain gunners here as you can see, the Mancubus are not afraid to take shots at you from across the level. So I'm going to get rid of this Pain Elemental before he throws too many Lost Souls into the wild. But I do think the Living End is one of the stronger levels in Doom 2. Definitely in the top five levels for me. It's a very nice step up in challenge and it provides a fitting penultimate level for what is a very good game in my opinion obviously because I wouldn't have gone through all the levels if I didn't think it was a good game. Oh, hello. Ah, uh, you see I got hit there. So you can see that from the beta he actually put this in here. So this big rock structure here where the windows have just opened up. So there's a lot of nice little traps as well that you've got to keep your eye out for in this level. There isn't a PS1 version of this level, unfortunately. Oh, I just think I walk a caco demon up. Not good on my part. Just going to go back and grab this health pack. And obviously is one of the biggest levels in Doom 2. I think this does a much better job of showing how big Doom 2 levels can be, actually be pretty fun. Compared to the Chasm, which I feel kind of squandered a lot of its potential. We'll grab the secret plasma rifle here. And we'll also grab all the ammo from up here. So if you grab that plasma rifle, it actually makes this level so much easier. You can see there, you can look across and... If you wanted to, you could take time to shoot all the enemies over here. Don't know why you'd want to, because they're not that difficult to deal with. So in order to progress past this next part, we've A, got to get rid of all these enemies, because they'll just mow down our health. But B, we've got to walk into that shadowy bit there, because it opens this door, and then there's a bunch of Baron, um, Hell Knights around this giant face here. As said, grabbing the plasma rifle if your pistol's starting really does make a difference here on this level. So we're going to take care of the 
Hell Knight here. And once we jump down, we're going to activate a little trap here with the Kako Demons. Now, I'm going to hit that switch because I want that platform to rise up behind me. Luckily, we've got armor and a lot of health. If you don't have much health by this point, this can be a real grind because you have to take care of all these Kako Demons because they will just tail you through the rest of the level. What I find impressive about this level as well, it doesn't actually use any key cards. So progression, like this part here, you have to go into these in a sequenced order. So you have to go into the middle one, then the left one, then the right one. And rather than making you go look for key cards, the game kind of challenges you. And it's, it's nice to be given these kind of little puzzle boxes to deal with. Obviously because it's Doom, these puzzles are not that difficult to work out. But it's nice that Romero was willing to kind of experiment even at this point in the game. Now let's see if I can get this monkey bus to in fight we can. So this is an interesting room, this one. It's a case of you've got to hit several switches to open the door to get to the final part of the level, but you can't get to that switch without going over here. But as you can see, there's an arch vial up there blocking that switch. So the switch is actually hidden there. God damn arch vials. <laughs> so I'm just going to shoot this arch vial in the face. Oh, hello. Now there's a bunch of imps here who they rarely cause any problems, but I'm going to get rid of them anyway because, you know, we got to show them off. You can't get outside there, unfortunately. It's one of those areas where it's not accessible unless you use the no clip cheat. There's also a berserk around the back of that switch, which is pretty useful. So... We're on our way to the final part of the level here, and there's a nice little baron trap here. So this baron here, if you let him walk around enough, he'll actually trigger teleporters and actually walk around the room. It's not that difficult to deal with, but if you're not expecting it, it can actually be tr troublesome. Now, this part for me is very nasty, because you've got these bony boys coming at you, and you've got all these zombie men. If you don't have much health and you're coming through that teleporter, you are in some real trouble. And that's kind of why I always try and aim for the Borny Boys before I go for the Zombie Men there. So you can see here, we've got enemies elevated above us, trying to target us. It's easy to miss this part here. Even though that switch is kind of lit up pretty nicely. It is pretty easy to miss this, and it is essential that you hit this switch in order to finish the level. So you have three different routes here that you can take. I think you can go down the middle one. I think you can go down the middle one, or this one first. I usually just go for this one because you can kind of run to the end here and then jump over here like that. But down each of these is a different enemy, so... Okay. Ah, oh, you mother. Yeah, he just he punched me into the lava there. So just going to grab some stim packs here. But again, I like the op I like the element here that you kind of have to do all this as a big puzzle and it leads to a sort of grand finale, which I appreciate. Because this level feels very big. Some of the Doom 2 levels try to feel big and they end up just feeling really empty. But this one, even though it doesn't make use of all the space in the level, I think it does a really good job of providing like a really tense challenge and making it feel like you're facing a horde of enemies. Speaking of horde of enemies, Let's deal with the cyber demon at the top here, but not before we take care of these mancubus that have been giving me pain throughout this level. Normally I just run for the exit, but given that, you know, we're having a bit of fun here, 
Let's see if we can take down the Cyber Demon and his two Mancubus friends here. It's actually a pretty nasty fight this if you don't take out the Mancubus because the Cyber Demon and the Mancubus together pose a pretty imposing challenge. So here's the Cyber Demon. Probably the least fought Cyber Demon I'd argue in all of the Doom games because as you can see the exit's literally right there. I'm very surprised they didn't put in like a special command where you had to beat this Cyber Demon in order to get to the exit. Because I think that would have been a pretty epic like fight here before the Icon of Sin level. But as you can see the Cyber Demon is dead and yeah this was the living end. It's not a super long level but it's a very well constructed level in my opinion. It really shows off the strengths of Doom 2 and sort of that grander scale that it's aiming for. I definitely think it's one of the better Doom 2 levels as well because it provides a nice challenge. It's it's not super abstract and a lot of the puzzles, even though some of the placements of the switches are not super obvious, like it doesn't take that much to figure out the way forward. And like I said, I like the fact that it doesn't use key cards. I think that's a real interesting idea from Romero there and it's something that many WAD designers have taken into account over the years and used themselves. But what do you think of the living end? What did you make of the beta or what little there was of it? And let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.